Last night on MasterChef Australia. Bring us the best pies possible. Poe was victorious in a double trouble mystery box. That wins me. But for Lucas, elimination. I'm happy with what I've done. I'm proud of what I've done. Tonight, it's another fight for survival. Five of you remain in the race, just a few yards short of the MasterChef title. As our chefs face off in the invention test. Unleash the apocalypse. And to avoid elimination, they'll need to impress guest judge Matt Moran. I just hope you haven't peaked too early, buddy. We are at the business end of this competition. This is where it gets serious. The winner is Poe. Yesterday I won the pie challenge, which was mystery box, and winning that challenge has um, enabled me to have this advantage today. And the advantage, there's a theme, and you're gonna pick it. <laughs> this is the moment that I have been waiting for in the entire competition. Where do you wanna go? Um, I think I'll definitely go with Malaysian. I'm pretty sure that most of the contestants have not much idea about Malaysian cooking, so um, it's definitely going to work to my advantage. You also get to pick the two core ingredients. What a huge, huge advantage of all the challenges to win in the whole competition. This is it. This is your one potential chance to take out one of the leading contenders by your smart use of those core ingredients. What are you going to do? The two core ingredients I'm choosing are going to be coconut cream and lingfish. I am beside myself with happiness. <laughs> Everyone's a little bit sort of tired, a little bit groggy, we only had a couple of hours sleep. But we're all just really excited to get going with the next day of the finals. I don't know what they're going to be throwing at us today, but I'm sure it's not going to be too easy. And the fact that Poe's in control is a little scary considering the, the, the style of food that she cooks and some of the ingredients that she uses. You shaped it a little bit. Mmm, kind of. <laughs> Can you be any more vague? No. <laughs> Poe's in a really good mood, which leads me to believe that she has got a lot of influence over what this test is going to be, but she's not giving away a damn thing. Poe is doing what anybody else would do and keeping that secret pretty tight. If the advantage is Poe gets to choose the style of cooking, it'll definitely be Asian-inspired, Oriental, and that's my downfall. It's just non-questionable. I'm a shocking Chinese cook. I got eliminated on an Asian dish. Justine? It's time for you to leave the MasterChef competition. I can go in it with confidence and hopefully I do the best. We arrive at the MasterChef kitchen. Didn't notice anything unusual until we actually got inside and walked up to the judges. But right up the front, in front of the judges, there's two silver cloches. There's something underneath them and we don't know what. Good morning, everyone. Yesterday you said goodbye to Lucas, the first person to be eliminated in this finals week. Now only five of you remain in the race, just a few yards short of the MasterChef title. And today, it's all about the invention test. You've done a few of these before. You'll be given a time limit to make a two-course meal from scratch. 
The person who fails to strike the right chord with the judges today will find themselves eliminated from the MasterChef kitchen tonight. We also have another guest judge with us today to help decide which one of you will be going home. Please welcome back Chef Matt Moran. <laughs> I'm Matt Moran, chef and owner of Aria Restaurant. What it takes to succeed in this industry is a lot of hard work and a lot of love. If you don't love it, don't do it. Last time I met Matt Moran, we were cooking off against each other. Justine, I'm gonna give you encouragement. Hurry up. Now he's the judge and I'm a little bit scared. Good to see you're still here. Good to be back. How are you, buddy? You well? Right. 10 out of 10. How are you? Hi. How are you, buddy? How are you, Matt? <laughs> How are you, guys? Good. Good yeah. Thank you. Matt, great to have you back. Great to be back. These are our top five amateur cooks in Australia. What are you expecting from them today? I expect some good food and, and good, good flavouring, good seasoning. Well, it's time to reveal the theme for today's invention test. And we have a little secret. We didn't pick the theme today. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, Poe won the pie challenge, and her prize was to pick today's theme and also the two core ingredients. Poe, step forward and unleash the apocalypse. Um, you guys guessed right. I did go with an Asian theme, but obviously I wasn't going to make it that easy for you, so I've gone Malaysian. Of all the cuisines she could have chosen, Malaysian is probably the one that I'm least familiar with. I'm really, really worried about this one. Po, please reveal your first core ingredient. My first ingredient? is coconut cream. Po, please reveal your second core ingredient. Mm -hmm. The second core ingredient is fish and it's ling. When I revealed ling fish and coconut cream, there was definitely a sigh of relief. So you wasn't that nasty. <laughs> Is anyone happy with the theme? <laughs> <laughs> what marks Malaysian food as being special? Use of spices, a lightness of touch, lemongrass, sometimes some aromatics like kaffir lime leaves, galangal, turmeric, satay is Malaysian, alaksa is Malaysian. Just think about where Malaysia is, think about those influences, and channel some of those flavours into the dishes that you put before us today. Remember you know, that combination, that balance of food, that sweet, salty and sourness is so important when it comes to Malay food. And remember, you've got a beautiful piece of fish here. You know, get the flavour right, but don't overcook it either. You will have 90 minutes to make this two-course Malay meal using coconut and ling as your core ingredients. Po, your time in the pantry starts now. Po gets five minutes in the pantry to pick her 20 ingredients. And that's a big advantage for her because she knows what she'll be cooking. We have no idea. We're making this up. Thanks, Kathy, Pepper. Some of the ingredients that I chose are the ikan bilis, which is a dried um, anchovy, balachan, dried shrimp paste, a lot of funk. <laughs> oh, po, your time's up. The only thing that's going through my head is uh, laksa. That's probably all I know. Um, and I keep thinking, OK, think of something else, Justine. There's got to be something else you know about Malaysian food. Mm -hmm. Shit, where's that wheel? Laksa. <laughs> you want lemon grass? I figure if I can cook Thai and put some spices that the judges have mentioned, maybe, maybe that'll be almost sort of Malaysian. When I'm in the pantry, I am going in blind. I'm, I have no idea what I'm meant to be getting. I'm just grabbing things that I think have Malaysian flavours. The three minutes flies because 
with unusual ingredients. You actually need to read the packet to find out what the hell's in there, and that slows you down so much. Um, so it's a bit of a scramble. Your time's up. Julia. Coming. I've got all these different things that can create the right sort of flavour profile, but I'm a little bit confused about what exactly I'm going to be doing with them. Right, guys, it's a big day. We've got faith in you. You can do it. Your time starts now. Chop, chop. It's time to start, and as usual, it's just chaotic. <laughs> Look at Poe go. Run. I am. The person who wins the invention test today will get an amazing advantage for tomorrow's challenge. And the person who does the worst dish will be eliminated. This is going to be really interesting because there's four people cooking something they're very unfamiliar with. There's huge pressure on Poe to do well today. I mean, she's picked the theme. She's picked the core ingredients. She's had all night to think about it. The judges will scrutinise her harder. I've waited so long in the competition to be able to cook something from my heritage. I'm cooking something that is um, familiar to my childhood and, you know, brings back a lot of memories. That smells amazing. That, that's that pandanus. Yeah. So, wow, smell that. Wow. So we're talking this green leaf here? Yep. The pandanus leaf, right? Yep. I'm making um, dessert with it. Okay. So Which I'm is? just going to um, stuff a glutinous rice dumpling right. uh, with coconut that's been cooked in that, this, and some brown sugar. Okay. A little dumpling in, in this sweet pandanus and coconut milk. The other man, I'm going to do otta otta, which is a fish custard. Okay. So I'm blending that up with all these um, fresh spices um, to make a wet spice mix. And then um, I'm actually going to boudin it, so I'm going to modernise it. You look absolutely happy. I'm stoked. You look like you're in control. Yes. Mm. The pressure's on, no? Yeah, it is. Because as much as, you know, you can talk the talk, yeah. now you have to walk the walk. Yes. So if the polar coaster comes back and yeah. you're on the dip, yep. what does that mean? Bad. It means bad. It means bad. <laughs> yes. I have never attempted a, a Malaysian-style rice dish before. How are you feeling about today's uh, little challenge? I'm feeling good. I'm channeling my inner Po. Right. And I'm um, <laughs> going to try something a bit funky. I'm going to make a nasi Chris. A I'm nasi make. Chris. I'm going to put fried egg on it. So I'm going to do a really flavour some rice. I'm going to cut the, the ling up quite small and get some really good texture out of frying it. So you get that fried shallot kind of texture okay. going on. And I'm going to do a dessert. So I'm going to attempt a, a coconut-style panna cotta yep. with lychees. Sounds I'm good to me. Give it Sounds great. So tell me, are you going to be the one that pushes Poe off the Patronus Towers? I hope so. I hope so. And regardless. Let's hope that is not rubbery when you do your panna cotta. Nothing yes. worse than a rubbery panna cotta, Chris. See you later. The key thing that can go wrong with this dessert is too much gelatin. I'm using powdered gelatin. It's notorious for being a bit nasty, so I've got to hope that I just don't put too much in. Got to grease a little Dario mould, pour the mixture in there, and straight into the fridge, because that needs at least an hour to set. Julia smells nice. Got chilli, got garlic. Go and go, maybe? Yep. So what's the dishes that you're doing, the two I'm doing, dishes? It's an eggplant with the coconut sauce. This is really important because it's the most flavourful part of this dish. So that's chopping and bashing fresh, spicy ingredients and just blending them all up and then frying them off. So that's yep. going to be quite spicy and really fragrant and yep. beautiful with this sort of silky eggplant. OK. And then I'm going to do the, um, the fish, the ling, uh, steamed with a darker caramelised sauce. What, what makes these dishes um, uniquely Malaysian to you? I think it's just the um, the combination of flavours, you know, that real fragrant um, spice mix with lots of... What are you worried about? I'm worried that um, it won't turn out the way I want it to, basically. There's a lot of things that could go wrong with my dishes. My eggplant needs to be cooked properly. And at this stage, I'm not sure whether it's going to be steamed or fried. If my two dishes aren't what I want them to be, then there's a very strong possibility I could be going home. You've got less than an hour to go. It smells absolutely amazing, but time is ticking away. This is your second elimination challenge. I'm sure none of you want to go home. We said goodbye to Lucas yesterday. You don't want to be following him. I've cooked fish before, um, and I've cooked rice pudding before, 
but I've never cooked in the way that I'm going to cook it today. Justine, you're bashing away there with that mortar and pestle. What are you creating? What are the two dishes? Uh, the main's going to be um, a piece of ling that I'm going to put with some flavours in the in a papillot. So you're doing, you're doing the fish in a bag? Um, yeah. With um, the, the ling spring rolls. Yep. Um, and, and that's going to be presented with a sauce around it, this red coconut sauce. Sounds good. Sounds really nice. And, and the entree? Uh, no, I'm doing a, a dessert. Okay. I'm doing uh, rice pudding, coconut rice puddings with light cheese um, and some lime through it too. Okay. Nice. That sounds nice. That sounds very nice. nice. Are you sure it's Malaysian? Um, yes. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. You're confident? All right, well, you keep chopping, keep pounding those spices, and uh, we'll see you soon. With Malaysian cooking, it is easy to not get the balance right, and a little bit more of something can make it a little bit bitter or can change the texture. There are a lot of spices involved, and it is difficult to balance. I feel happy with my dishes, but I don't know if they're Malaysian. So you've made a curry paste. What's the curry paste for? The curry paste is for the vegetable it's curry. For the vegetable curry. I'm doing a vegetable coconut curry for my coconut course and I'm doing like a marinated fish with Asian greens and a bit of a peanut sauce. Peanut sauce, like a satay sauce? Yeah. Okay. It smells very I'll Thai use... to me. I'm comfortable with Thai. I'm going to try and twist it to Malaysian. But I just want to put gonna up What's going to do really... that? Um, just, I think, some of the curry powder, the turmeric and... Okay. Turmeric says Malaysian to you? I think so. George, it's heady in here. It smells amazing. This does not smell like the MasterChef kitchen. Unfamiliar smells, unfamiliar flavours. Let's think of Justine. These are the sort of smells and flavours that she's not familiar with. No. Does she look stressed to you? Um, look, I don't think it's stressed. I think she's focused. I love her attitude. And you know what? Her menu doesn't sound too bad. She's got a rice pudding there with lychees and coconut. Why not? And what about Julie? She's the other one that I'm a bit concerned about. They're dishes that aren't quite Malay. They're a bit sort of homely Australian. It's going to be interesting how she's going to try and get it over the line to make it Malay, but also be able to cook it right, and yeah. that's important too. Yeah. Now, Julia, you know, I get a sense that she's got an idea of what she's doing. I don't think she really knows what Malay food is, but getting over there, like she's pounding a little spice mix, it smells really, really good. Julia's got a palate, Gary, you know, and we saw it in the Greek challenge. She brought us a really tasty dish. But I reckon she'll be able to nail this one. Yeah. Now, Chris, Mr. Cool Cat, here he is cooking Malaysian. Do you think he's got a clue? Yeah, I reckon he does. He'll nail it. He, he loves that gutsiness about food. Yeah. I think Chris might be the only one that's going to give Poe a run for her money. This is her domain. This is what she knows. She, I reckon she's standing there cooking, and I reckon she can see her auntie to her right, her mother to her left. Hopefully, she's going to do them proud. The only thing that's concerning me, she's got a lot going on. Has she bitten off more than she can chew? And now it's just getting super frantic. Poe's cooking in front of me. She's got some crazy ass techniques going on, but I hope she has a Poe meltdown and mucks it up because I need all the help I can get at this point. I really was on high speed today. Because I was sort of trying to multitask, I was a little bit in danger of um, burning the pandan um, essence that I've made. What's that? Oh. Oh, Poe. Okay, let's go, let's go. Let's... No, no, Poe. Burns it a little bit. It's bad. It's just very bad. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Because the edges caught a little bit when Gary came around and um, he commented on, ooh, ooh, what are you doing there? That's fine. I've got all the black out. I was starting to fret a little bit that um, Weird Poe was rearing its ugly head as well. 45 minutes to go and I'm using my food processor to um, break down the spice paste. I'm having quite a lot of trouble balancing it, so I'm starting to think, oh my god, why did I pick this dish? And I just left too many processes to do, um, so yeah, I have got myself into a bit of a stitch. I've got 45 minutes to go. Um, Hopefully I should have everything cooked and ready to go in the next 15 minutes and then I can spend half an hour just finishing the dish. The last thing to do is prepare my ling. I've decided to prepare the ling two different ways. Half of the ling I cut up into mouth-sized kind of pieces and I'll fry those off so it's a little bit soft. The other half I'm going to cut up really fine and fry that quite a lot so it gets a, a crunchy texture and I'll spread that across the top of the finished rice dish. Matt Moran and Matt Preston give us some direction. Matt Moran is still a bit of an imposing figure even in his civvy so um, yeah I think we're all a bit nervous. In terms of, in terms of what in terms of you're going to get a serving on the banana leaf? Yep. <laughs> cut the shape, assemble my rice, um, get all the flavours mixing through. Yeah, I've just fried off some, some shrimp, some 
garlic, 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 some chili. Fantastic flavor. That shrimp and, um, and chili kind of mixture is fantastic. Well, just texturally, too, it's, it's fantastic. I just don't know about uh, doing that to the fish. It's incredibly risky doing two dishes that I have no idea about. The only thing I'm really worried about is the eggplant. My eggplant needs to be cooked properly. I steam one piece and I fry another piece and work out which one I like better. Um, I actually like the steam piece because it's got that nice sort of silken texture, whereas the fried piece is kind of oily and the skin goes a little bit tough. You're not allowed to give me tips. Yeah. You'd be telling you to fry it, wouldn't you? The other dish is my steamed ling with a Malaysian style broth. I need to get the flavour balance correct, you know, that, that will go with fish and will also be Malaysian. Is there sarge, is there sarge in wine or something like that? Uh, there's a bit of um, black vinegar. Black vinegar. Black vinegar, that's what it is. Yeah. Not real Malay, but you know, good flavour. I'm not sure what to think because I can recognise Thai flavours, but I can't think of any way to change that to make it Malaysian. Can I try a little bit of that? Well, Malaysian or Thai, Matt? It, it, does, uh, it does have that real sort of Thai flavour to it. Matt Moran says that my dish tastes uh, a bit Thai. Mm. Yeah. You know, border, border of Malaysia and Thailand, up in the north there. The problem in the past with, um, with some of Judy's Asian dishes, they become a bit pan-Asian. That curry doesn't represent anything Malaysian whatsoever. It's really important to taste. Sorry, I have to trust my palate. I've got nothing else at this stage. I'm relying on it to get me through this. It gets to about half an hour, and I still haven't done my fish, it's not in the oven. I still have to finish my sauce, I still have the rice pudding to do. My time management is shocking. I am not in a good spot, actually. I think I'll get everything plated, but it will be quite ugly. I am the usual um, hurricane poo at my station and that it is an absolute disgrace. What a mess. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> huh? Don't even. I tell you what, I wish I had you in my kitchen for a day. Oh. <laughs> so, so, ora kaklak in there. Yep. So not in a traditional leaf. No. But steaming it, boudin style. And I'm gonna, this is a spice mix for the stink bean. I'm about to stir fry that, stir fry this. And I have to get my dessert in here steaming, so I have to stop. Hey, we'll, we'll get over here, folks. Okay. I just can't believe the mess you've got here. I know, I know. I'm sorry. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm starting to realise that my little flaw of being messy is is actually a massive flaw. Guys, we are at the business end of this competition. That's right. Don't go down in the last round. Glove up. You've got less than 15 minutes to go. And 15 minutes to go, I'm steaming my eggplant. I'm steaming my fish. I'm just sort of getting the last finishing touches of everything done so that I can plate up in time. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I can see that I'm going to have things done. And I think I'm going to have enough time to plate things up really nicely. Um, at this point, I'm starting to get a little bit worried about Chris because he's already plated it up. I'm happy with it. I think the flavours come out really nicely. His dish actually looks very traditionally Malaysian and his dessert is not a bad effort. Possibly he could overtake me with his mane. I've got plenty of time to spare. I've just got to finish off my dessert now. You've got five minutes to go, five minutes. Five minutes to go equals freaking out. I was just doing everything at once, dessert, then main, then dessert, then main, going back to one another, and I wasn't concentrating on just one. You have one minute to go. At one minute to go, I'm manic. I have to rip my eggplant out of the steamer. I don't think it's 100% ready yet. I'm sort of just chucking everything on the plate. One minute to go and I'm attempting to cook my spring roll. Um, the oil is just not hot enough. Uh, I must have turned off the burner and it was just warm. You have 30 seconds to go. And when I ask you to put your tools down and step away from the stoves, please, please do so. Last 10 seconds, I'm just chucking, <laughs> basically just sprinkling things and pouring things and just getting it all on the plate. 
You have 10 seconds to go. I was counting down and they still weren't browning. And, you know, I had my tongs ready to go when time's up. Three, two, one. That's it. Step away from your benches, guys. And it was just, damn it, why did this happen to me again? Uh, once the challenge is over and I look at my two dishes, um, I don't think they look good. So I'm really disappointed. Just gonna have to wait and see now. It's a guessing game. Um, it was always gonna be a guessing game. Um, and it's all about taste and flavour. And if, if it's there, then it's there. If it's not, then it's not. So I'm just gonna have to wait and see. This is the finals week of MasterChef Australia. You've just completed your invention test. That is, you cooked a two-course meal using coconut and lingfish as your core ingredients. And you cooked to a theme chosen by Poe, which was Malaysian. The first two dishes that we'd love to taste belong to Chris. I don't want to go out on a Malaysian dish. I think I've done really well so far in the competition and if I screw this up, I'll, I'll be quite annoyed. Rice with herbs and ling and a fried egg. And that's a coconut panna cotta with yeah. lychee. I think it could have been more interesting, to be perfectly honest. You know, like some more textures in there, like lots of different things so that it sort of grabbed your interest. Yeah, I've sort of been following you a little bit on this show and some of the stuff that I've seen is, is been absolutely brilliant. I would expect at the pointy end of the competition that your food would be a little bit better than this because to be really honest, this really doesn't appeal to me whatsoever. I just hope you haven't peaked too early, buddy, because <laughs> it'd be a shame for you to go. It really would. In terms of the flavour, I get the coconut in the panna cotta, but that is so so hard, it's way too hard. It should never be like that. That would bounce if we threw it. All I can do now is hope that somebody screws up worse than I have. I'm very nervous because I've been banging on about how I want to cook, you know, Malaysian this whole time. And then for me to sort of fall short of that would be quite humiliating. <laughs> Patai with a sambal paste and um, stink bean and fish custard. A glutinous rice dumpling stuffed with pandan leaf and uh, palm sugar. That's beautiful. Lots of interesting flavours. It's just really fresh and vibrant. I love it. I love it. It's fantastic. Interesting, tasty, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful dish, well done. Visually, doesn't really look appealing. Well, that flavour really packs a punch, doesn't it? I'm quite happy to have another spoon for that. Overall, pretty good. I think you uh, outwitted them, outsmarted them, and uh, you're probably here to stay for a little bit longer, I'd say. Cheers. Thanks, man. I was absolutely going to use this advantage to its fullest, and by picking Malaysian, I did do that. I'm feeling disappointed. I know that I haven't done my best. I haven't put forward something that I'm happy with and I know that the judges are not going to be happy with it either. Eggplant in a coconut sauce 
and the ling with a spice broth with uh, you know lots of Malaysian flavours. Your fingers of eggplant are quite squeaky because of the steaming and they're not quite cooked enough. Rather than being that delicious, creamy, oozy kind of texture you get when you deep fry them. Um, but having said that, that sauce, you're pretty close there. Is it supposed to be raw? It's not meant to be raw, no. The, the chunk I had was a fair amount of rawness in there. Okay. Um, do I like the ling dish? No, not really. I'll be honest with you. So it's, it's actually got a vinegar in it, doesn't it? It does. It's, it's too intense and there's no connection to Malaysian food whatsoever. And the fish really isn't, isn't cooked enough. You all right? Yeah, no, it's just really irritating to me plating up dishes that, that don't represent me and, and show what I can do, basically. Julia, and you know the secret here? You know what this industry is all about? It's about picking yourself back up, taking the criticism, just having another go. You're in the top five, don't forget. You should be very, very proud of yourself. Well done. I'm not feeling overly confident because it doesn't look like any kind of food I've ever eaten before, so I don't think it's Malaysian. A vegetable coconut curry and marinated ling fish with greens and just a peanut sauce. What I'm worried about is the use of zucchini and udon noodles. It's not Malay at all. But the flavour of that, I can actually taste Malaysian flavours. It's really nice flavour. Now the ling. Let's try. Let's hope it's cooked. Is it cooked? Uh, yeah, let's hope. <laughs> I deliberately left it a bit under, so while it rested it would um, come good, but I'm not sure if I've left it too far under. You know, if you didn't know it was ling, before you ate it, you'd go, oh, maybe that's not too bad. But the problem with ling is it's not the grade that you need to be eating raw. So I can't eat it, Julie, I'm sorry. It's OK. What I like about this dish is that ling is a firm flesh fish that works wonderfully well with robust flavours and curries. What I don't like about it is the fish isn't cooked. I'm worried that I'm about to be eliminated for completely and utterly screwing up cooking a piece of fish. It's my turn to take the dishes up to the judges to taste. Hopefully they'll find some good things in my dish, hopefully. Ling fish with Malaysian style red sauce with um, ling spring rolls. And I've got um, a lychee, coconut and lime rice pudding. Justine, never seen you look so upset. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a little bit upset today. I want to come up here happy with my dish and I'm not happy with my dish today. This is elimination. I could be going home tonight. Just don't know if it's going to be enough. 
Looks good. It looks really, really good. The sauce is good. It tastes great. It's got some real depth of flavor. That's a good sauce, a really, really good sauce. Love the sauce. It's got great flavor. It's zippy, it's zingy, it's gutsy. I love the color of it. It shows this depth there. Well done. secret I can tell you and not these guys but I love cold roast pudding love cold roast pudding for me that's delicious I think the flavors work beautifully it's got that gula malacca flavor that really sweet fudgy palm sugar flavor my mouth is zinging um, I have to say it's possibly the ugliest dessert we've <laughs> seen on the show ever <laughs> Congratulations, you've excelled at this challenge. Well done, I'm very happy. I've really surprised myself this time. Went in there with this gloom face, um, and in the end I had a grin on my face because it wasn't as bad as I actually thought it was. Poe, Chris, Julia, Julie and Justine. This is it, the judge's verdict. The winner will be given a pivotal advantage in tomorrow's knockout challenge. If your meal was the least impressive, then you'll be saying goodbye to all of us and to the MasterChef title tonight. It's time for us now to reveal our decision. If I call your name, please step forward. Justine. Congratulations. You two have cooked the best meals of the day. Well done. I was a bit taken back and almost a bit shocked. I was a bit speechless to know that I did an okay job with uh, Asian cooking. Of course, there can only be one winner, and that winner will receive a power that is pivotal to tomorrow's challenge. And it could possibly help you avoid elimination. I'll die if it's not me, because I would have just flushed this advantage down the toilet. The winner of the invention test today is Poe. Well well done, Pam. Good job. I think my mum's going to be so happy for me. I keep thinking back to how lucky I am to be here. I'm absolutely thrilled. Poe, that dessert was exquisite. It was poetry in a bowl. We've seen some fantastic food from you. So well done. Great dishes, great execution, great use of your power. Another step nearer. Oh, congratulations. Fantastic dessert. You know, for me, that was the killer dish of the day. There's no question. Ho, oh, Justine, well done. You can rejoin the line. Chris. Julia. And Julie. Can you take a step forward? You three are our bottom three, and one of you is about to leave. Chris, why should you stay? I think I've displayed an unfaltering direction from the minute I started. I've consistently been in the top three pretty much the entire competition. I think that should display to you that um, I'm taking it very, very seriously. Julia, why do you want to stay in this competition? I want to stay because I haven't shown you what I can do yet. I haven't had a chance to show you my style and my cooking and how good I can how good I can be, basically. Julie, do you think you should be staying? I've really evolved from the time I started here. I haven't 
stuck sort of steadfastly to my old ideas. I've grown with new ideas, many, many new ideas, and I just really want the opportunity to keep showing you that I can keep doing that. One of you is about to go home. Chris, I'm gonna put you out of your misery. You're safe for another day. Thank you. I've only just scraped through. The other two have just screwed up a bit more than me. Um, so yeah, the skin of my teeth, this one. Julia, Julie, one of you has to go home tonight. I'm thinking that it's probably my last few minutes in the competition. So here I am again in the bottom two. With my heart hammering, my hands shaking, I can feel adrenaline in my fingers. This time, it's surely got to be my turn to go. Julia, I'm afraid it's you. It's pretty heartbreaking hearing that I've been eliminated. You know, it's... Um, I've only just got back into the competition, so it was like, this was my time, and I didn't get to, you know, show them what I could do. Julia, I'm sure you want to know why it's you that's going home tonight. And the simple reason was that you didn't carry that Malaysian theme as well as you could have. The flavours weren't robust enough, they weren't honest enough, they weren't true enough. It is amazing to have got this far and to be in the top five. I've been able to do a whole lot of things that I've never thought I'd be able to do. Being able to walk into restaurant kitchens and do service, and um, that's been amazing. I've been able to talk to chefs that are just like my idols. I scored plate two, nine out of ten. Oh. The moment during MasterChef is probably beating Pete Evans because that was never meant to happen and I did it. Nine out of ten. <laughs> oh Julia, when we first saw you, we saw a natural cook with a great palate, poor plating skills and a lack of knowledge of technique. And what we've seen since you've come back is someone who now understands how to make a beautiful modern dish, how to combine flavours in a way that surprises and excites George and Gary and makes us want to know more about what you're going to cook next. Thanks. Julia, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. It's really sad walking out of MasterChef Kitchen for the last time. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> thank you. It's been a fantastic experience. It's probably the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me. I suppose this is just the beginning for me. It, it really is. I mean, MasterChef is just um, my entry into my future. And so I'm, I'm excited to see what the future's going to hold. Chris, Julie and Justine, it's time to head home and get some very well-deserved rest. You need it because tomorrow is another elimination challenge. We'll see you soon. I'm left there with the judges to uh, find out about my advantage for tomorrow's challenge and I really set myself up sweet so I'm pretty pleased. <laughs> Tomorrow, you'll be facing the pressure test. And the advantage that you will receive is you will find out what that pressure test is tonight. You will get to see and taste the dish that you'll all be cooking. You're also going to get the recipe that you can study tonight. Brilliant. This is a huge opportunity for me to take charge again. Let's have a look. I am going to make the most of it. We are 
are definitely in for a world of pain tomorrow. Tomorrow night on MasterChef Australia. I really am starting to suspect that my advantage is quite minimal. Justine, Julie, Chris and Poe face the pressure test. If you thought the crock and bush was tough, this is a whole nother level. And special guest judge Bill Granger will demand the very best. I've got to say, I'm expecting a lot. It's an epic challenge, and one chef will be eliminated. We've got nine different opportunities to screw up. <laughs> I'm not plating up today. For the judges, it's their most difficult decision yet. You're making me cry. This is ridiculous. <laughs>